Well, welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine and I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A feature to answer questions or ask questions rather to our presenters at any point throughout our session tonight. Second, your camera and microphone are off so our presenters cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions happening. Feel free to register for additional sessions. And then finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week or so um, for you to review. With that said, I wanna turn it over to our amazing presenters. Our first presenter is DePaul University. Hi everybody, it is Natalie Lug here. I am an Associate Director of Admission at DePaul University. Just to get us started about the basics, DePaul is located just 45 minutes west of Indianapolis. We are an out-of-state institution. It's about a nine hour drive from the Twin Cities in St. Paul. I did grow up in Woodbury, Minnesota, so I do know the Twin Cities very well and I know what it means to go out of state for school, but the pot itself is a little bit smaller. Um, average class size is 17, and we do have an eight to one student to faculty ratio. So if that's the type of school that you're looking for, one that has a lot of class discussions, a lot of participation and connections with our faculty members, as well as other staff members across campus, um, we might be the school for you. And these are just a few statistics that I wanted to share with you all. Even though we're an institution in the state of Indiana, only about 33% of our students actually come from the state of Indiana. Um, I not only recruit in Minnesota, but also the states of Missouri and then basically the whole West Coast. So last year I did a count over the summer and about 33 of our students do represent the states of Washington, California, and Oregon. So small but mighty on the West Coast with, with representation. Um, but those of you who are wondering what types of academic majors and minors we have, obviously we have a huge list on our website, but we're pretty unique in that we have a College of Liberal Arts and a School of Music. And there's a lot of fluidity between the two schools, the classes that you could take. You don't have to be physically enrolled in our School of Music to participate in any of the vocal groups, any of the orchestras, sign up for, for private lessons or take classes within the School of Music and vice versa with the College of Liberal Arts. So you might have some musicians in your bio labs, um, you might have some econ majors uh, working in the orchestra or other vocal groups that we have on campus, but our students have until second semester of their sophomore year to officially declare. I will say it's fairly common for an institution like DePauw, a liberal arts school, um, to strengthen you in all different types of skill sets, and not just particularly your major, but throughout that exploration in that first year and a half, you're going to find that you have a lot of different academic interests that you might not have known that you had. Um, in high school. So that's where a lot of our students end up double majoring or at the very least having a major and a minor. But you're also not going to be in the classroom as much as you are in high school. So how else do you get involved on campus? It could be through any of these eight different academic centers. We do have plenty of others as well, such as our Center for Spiritual Life, our Women's Center too, um, that are in very involved in all the different types and clubs and organizations that we re represent here on campus. But one of my favorite parts about campus is actually going off campus, and that's part of some of our graduation requirements, um, going and getting that experience of learning. So it could be studying abroad for a semester, it could be doing a paid internship. We have a 4141 system in place where you'll take four classes in fall and spring semester and then have a chance to do one to three weeks of some sort of either on campus or off campus opportunity um, that is very co-curricular and ex extracurricular combined for experiential learning. We call those winter term and May terms, but we really want to make sure that you're really taking what you're learning in the classroom and applying that to the real world to really help you figure out where you want to go next after DePaul, whether that be graduate school, whether that be an entry level job, any of the like. But moving forward with what else you could get involved in on campus, we I definitely describe our students as extroverts, although you can come to campus and be an introvert, you'll definitely learn how to become an extrovert. The only reason I say that is because our students like to pile their plates high with as many things as possible in terms of involvement, whether it is going off campus for an internship or multiple study abroad opportunities, um, being a division three athlete, being in one of our four honors and fellows programs, sustainability and leadership, maybe a faith-based organization. Um, we really definitely get our students involved and there's always something or multiple things for everyone. We have activities fairs that actually also happen the, the first week that classes begin in fall and spring semester, not just for our freshmen, um, but also for our upperclassmen who are wondering 
what else they want to do, what else they could get involved in on campus. But I also want to point out where our students have gone off to in terms of those internships. I know for study abroad in particular, our students are very uh, popular to go off to like say South Africa, obviously Europe is big, but even Thailand, New Zealand and Australia, the Galapagos is another option. But if our students are thinking graduate school, these are just some of our more popular options. And a lot of those internships too on the left-hand side of your screen lead to those top 10 employers. So you see a lot of connections um, with our alumni in particular, helping getting our students feet in the door wherever they end up going. Um, I do want to introduce you to a few of our alumni who've gone off to achieve big, great things. Uh, they might relate to what you want to study, um, and it also shows what else you could get involved in on campus as a student, but then where else you could go. So these are some of our most recent alumni um, that have gone on to do big and great things out in the big, bad real world, um, but you can also see what else they've gotten involved in here on campus. But Last but not least, I also want to touch on our application process for those of you who are sophomores, juniors, maybe even freshmen. We are on the common application. That's definitely the one that I recommend applying to because it's free to apply. There's no supplemental essay that we require. It's just one of the, I think there's six different essay topics on the common application. You only need to pick one um, for it to apply. But we also do a holistic review process where we look at every single piece of your application and we're also test optional. Um, but that's enough about me. I know you've got a few other schools to listen to. Thanks so much for being here, guys, and have a great night. Thank you so much, DePaul University. Up next, we have Iowa State University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Colleen Copas, and I am Assistant Director for Regional Recruitment at Iowa State University. I'm actually based in the Twin Cities, even though my campus is located in Ames, Iowa. Ames, Iowa is centrally located just about 30 minutes north of Des Moines, Iowa, the state capital. We have nearly 31,825 cyclones that call our campus home, ranging from all 50 states, over 120 countries. Nearly 44% of our students actually come from out of state. Fun fact is that Minnesota is our second largest population. I really attribute this to that we are only three hours away from the Twin Cities, Rochester, and Ankato. So if you're looking for an out-of-state institution, but still relatively close to home, Iowa State is a perfect fit in that regard. We are a tier one large public research university, and we are a part of the Association of American Universities, which is the top leading C5 public research and private universities. Our really big focus on our campus um, is undergraduate research with over 100 centers to choose from with undergraduate research and having a faculty mentor. I did that as a student as a psychology major, love my experience, and ultimately my professor actually gave me a recommendation for graduate school. In addition to research, we have over 900 student clubs and organizations to get involved in. We have about 15% of our students that are part of a sorority or fraternity. But if that is not what you're interested in, we also have ranging sports clubs from um, the chess club to swim club to tennis club to rugby, women's soccer club, just to name a few. We also have special interest groups. So we have actually a tree climbing club on campus. We also have eSports club. Um, we have a cyclones like aviation and then solar car as well. Within our programs at Iowa State, we have six academic colleges that you will be directly admitted to when you apply for admission at Iowa State University. There are over 100 programs to choose from, and about a third of our students actually come in undecided. So if you're not sure what you want to study, that's completely okay. Some of our most popular majors include mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, computer science, animal science, kinesiology, elementary education, and pre-business. We are one of the top 20 largest College of Engineering programs in the United States, and many students from Minnesota come to Iowa State in the STEM-related fields. When you're thinking about after your time at Iowa State as a cyclone, nearly 95% of our students are employed or within graduate school within six months. There's nearly 3,000 companies that recruit Iowa State students for internships and full-time employment, and we have partnerships with actually Twin Cities businesses such as Land O'Lakes, General Mills, 
um, US Bank, 3M, to name a few. So you can actually come back to the Twin Cities after your time in, in Ames. Also, in Ames, we are a college town that's a district of Ames, Iowa, that half of our population in Ames is actually um, students ranging from 18 to 22. Nearly 83% of students receive some type of financial aid and we actually have automatic merit-based scholarships for students in Minnesota when you apply for admission. You don't have to have a separate application. We just look at your academic information when you apply for admission. So in addition to all of the great opportunities at Iowa State University, what I would recommend is exploring our campus. We have a number of campus visit opportunities and virtual visits. If you haven't checked this out, I highly recommend. Other than I mentioned, we are actually test optional um, from fall 2021 and fall 2022. We are a self-report school, so that means that you don't have to send transcripts in until if you decide to be a cyclone. So you just tell us exactly what your GPA is and if you've taken test scores, as well as classes that you've taken in high school. We have nearly 80% of our students are accepted from Minnesota each year. So there's a high acceptance rate when you apply to Iowa University. One last thing, a fun fact about Iowa State is that the Rice Krispie Treat was actually invented on our campus. And so anytime that you think about a Rice Krispie Treat, think about Iowa State and that it was actually founded at our campus. If you have any other questions, I will put in the Q&A tonight the contact information for myself as well as our direct website. Thank you again, Spence. Thank you, Iowa State University. Up next, we have Minnesota State University, Morgan. Right. Hello, everyone. My name is Scott Westby. I'm our Assistant Director of Admissions at MSUM. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking to you about what MSUM could offer to you. So if you don't know, MSUM is on the western side, side of the state of Minnesota as part of the Fargo-Moorhead area, which is a big college town. So I always start with some of the reasons why students choose us when we pull our incoming freshmen. These are four things that we hear quite a lot. Fargo-Moorhead area. Like I said, big college town. There's actually five colleges in the area. So that's a lot of opportunity for young people to get their academic and maybe even professional start. Uh, we have a lot of award-winning faculty that we've hired because of their private sector experience. So that brings in some interesting experience uh, to our classroom setting. Dragon family culture, certainly not a huge school. That allows us to give our students some individual attention. And then obviously our programs is what might draw students to us as well. So to give you a sense of the size of MSUM, we have about a, an average class size of about 23 students. Uh, you're not gonna be in lecture halls of 200 students if you don't feel like that's your thing. If you're looking for a smaller environment, we definitely have that to offer. Um, also, 100% of our courses are taught by faculty members. We do have graduate assistants at MSUM, but they are never tasked with teaching courses. They are there to supplement any education. So you are going to learn from the experts in their field. Overall, we have about 5,500 students every year. And so some of the majors that we offer, um, it's kind of a mix of really popular and really unique. What I mean by that is popular programs, you can certainly find at a lot of schools and that are very popular at MSUM as well. Uh, we have a big pre-med program, so health and medical sciences, it's wonderful for that. Our Paseca School of Business is in the top 5% of, of accredited business schools worldwide. Um, social work, graphic design, um, elementary education is our most popular major because we started out as a teacher's college way back when. So we've always kind of continued that tradition. But we also have some unique programs that you might not be able to find at other smaller schools like ourselves. Things like speech language hearing sciences, if you want to become a um, uh, somebody that works in that field, um, then we have both the undergraduate and the graduate. Speech pathologist, couldn't think of the word. There you go. Broadcast journalism, if you want to be an on-campus or on-air on news anchor or a sports broadcaster, we have that program. Animation and film production, the behind the scenes on the movie industry. Um, and then entertainment industries is the behind the scenes on the music making industry. So really good mix of popular and unique. But no matter what major you pursue, we're going to have some form of experiential learning. So this is the big thing at MSUM. We got to get you outside the typical lecture hall as much as possible so that you can learn in a lot of different ways. 
Uh, that could be study abroad. It could be hands-on research. If you're somebody in the sciences or psychology, you'll probably be doing some research on our campus. Internships, job shadowings, especially if you're a business major, we're going to have you do at least one, maybe two different internships. Uh, if you're an education major, a lot of practicum hours in an actual classroom setting. And then the last one is Tri College University. There are five colleges in Fergal Moorhead, like I mentioned. If you're enrolled at any one of the five, you can actually take up to one class each semester at any of the other four schools. So it gives you more options because maybe MSUM wouldn't have everything that you need, but we would have something that we can partner with NDSU or Concordia or M State, et cetera. As far as getting involved, it's kind of a part of that classic college experience, right? Um, getting involved in different student organizations, whether that's um, athletic opportunities, we have 13 different music ensembles, theater, faith-based groups, Greek life, et cetera. There's so many that I know you can't read all of the things on the screen. That's very intentional, just to evoke that there are a lot of different ways to get involved. Related to that, athletic opportunities, we have uh, 14 sports, nine for women, five for men. We compete at the Division II level, we're the Dragons, in case you didn't know, and we compete pretty well in the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference. Uh, we also have a dance team. So if you wanna get involved in any of our athletic opportunities, you know, hit us up, we'll get you in contact with one of our coaches, start the conversation from there. Um, but most of our students are not student athletes. So go to the games, they are free for any student to attend. Quickly talk about costs. Uh, tuition and fees are right around $9,000 uh, a year if you are a Minnesota resident. So we're able to keep the tuition costs pretty low. And then as far as housing and meals go, only required that very first year on campus. So after that, it becomes optional. So keep that in mind as you're doing some college planning. Finally, admission requirements. You have to meet one of these three criteria. Either have a 3.0 cumulative high school GPA, be in the top half of your class rank, or have a 21 or above on the ACT. If you meet any one of those three criteria, you're automatically admitted. We do not require an ACT, but if you do well in the test, we will still let it help you. So that's the information I wanted to uh, convey. Um, biggest or the best way to learn about any college is to visit it though. So uh, I would encourage you to sign up for one of our visits. We are offering safe uh, and in-person visits Monday through Friday, uh, two times a day, and in some cases, four times a day. But we also do have some virtual visit options if you'd be more inclined to go for one of those. So uh, let us know if you'd like to visit campus and we hope to see you on campus soon. Take care. Thank you, Minnesota State University, Moorhead. Um, I do want to encourage all of our attendees, if you have any questions, feel free to use that Q&A feature. With that said, I do want to introduce our next presenter, which is Reed College. Hi, everyone. My name is Grace Fisher, and I am an Associate Dean of Admission at Reed, and I'm also the Reed College uh, Admission Counselor uh, for Minnesota. So I have the pleasure of getting to know all of you in your admission process. Um, Reed is a small 1,400 student um, private liberal arts and sciences college in Portland, Oregon. Um, we are in the city of Portland, but we have a pretty big campus. So you've got the kind of nice rolling lawns and quiet feel of uh, being a little further away from the hubbub. That said, you can hop on a bus and get downtown in 15 to 25 minutes. Um, and although we're pretty far away in Portland, maybe a four hour flight, um, you'll be surrounded by um, people from all over the country and all over the world. And we actually have students who travel the farthest to come to read. So if you want a bit of an adventure and um, you wanna be around other people who are also on that same kind of adventure, you'll be surrounded by people from everywhere. And I think that's really exciting. What draws people to come so, so far away uh, to beautiful Portland? Um, I think the thing that brings people to read is our students are really in motivated by their love of learning. Um, it's, a, it's an intellectual kind of environment. So people who love learning and want to be around other people who share that love. Um, what that looks like, some of the kind of ed educational highlights, um, we have class, an average class size of about 15 students. Um, your classes are always taught by professors. We all go by first names. So it's also creating this very egalitarian environment where your professors aren't Dr. So-and-so, it's Pancho, it's Kara. It just feels really intimate. Um, we also have a different grading system at Reed. Instead of 
being focused on what's my GPA, what grade am I getting on everything, having your grades on all of your homework, you actually don't see your grades unless you ask to. And instead, all of your work is um, covered in your professor's handwriting. So you get to see, not thinking about what grades am I getting, what grades is everyone else getting, but you're thinking in your day-to-day -day learning about what am I doing well? Um, what am I gonna do better next time? And that allows people to focus on the ideas, the learning, what we're all here for. Um, the other unique feature of uh, Read is our senior thesis. Every student in their senior year will do a one-on-one -on -one project with a professor. Um, and that usually looks like research. It might also look like a creative project, writing a play, writing a clarinet quintet, whatever works for you. Um, but you're going to come out of college having produced something that you can show to the rest of the world. Um, this is probably one of the reasons why Reed produces a higher rate of PhDs than um, every other college in the country except three. So our students love learning so much, they want to keep doing it for the rest, for the rest of their lives and becoming professors, and about 20% uh, of our graduates, in fact, to do just that. Um, so what do they study here? Um, we are split, pr pr split pretty evenly between arts, social sciences, humanities, and science. Um, we're most well known, I think, for biology, psychology, English, um, as well as some of our more small majors like math and philosophy and classics. You don't declare your major until the end of sophomore year, so you've got a couple of years to make sure that you love the thing that you're doing, which is really useful. You can explore without worrying about committing. Um, and you're going to have the opportunities of Portland to intern to try out and figure out how does what I'm learning in the classroom work in the outside world to prepare you for life after college. Um, socially, Reed is full of people who love what they love and want to share it with other people. They're really passionate and excited students. Um, and our social scene is very much based around students finding uh, people who are excited about the same things as them and sharing that joy, as well as learning about new stuff from each other. Um, my favorite conversation to overhear is, oh, wow, I don't know anything about that. Tell me more about rugby and why I should go hang out with the rugby team. Um, we are also a school with a unique commitment to inclusivity. At Reed, every student group is open to everyone, which means um, there's no fraternities and sororities. There's no varsity sports. It's all you know, club clubs, including club sports. And you don't have to worry about, I can't do that because I've never done it before. That's the exact reason you should do it. Um, we're also a campus that cares a lot about having caring students. Um, we have an honor principle where everyone on campus is agreeing to basically do the right thing, to not, think, not just think about what do I have to do to be within the rules, but what's the right thing to do in any given situation? Our students are really committed to that idea. And I think for a lot of students, that's a big draw is being at a campus full of really kind, thoughtful, reflective people. Um, so if that sounds interesting, we have a huge number of virtual events, a lot of panels. You can get to know what it would be like to be a student here, what it's like to move from far away. Um, and of course, if you're a junior, we would love for you to start thinking about applying. Things to know about applying, uh, it's always free. We take any one of three applications. We have our own but uh, we especially love the common application and the coalition application. Um, we are test blind, which means not only do you not have to send us test scores, but we actually won't look at your test scores. Um, we don't want have you to have to worry about should I send them or not. And the final thing to know about Reed is that we are a private school with a very high tuition. Um, please don't let you scare that away because we're also one of the few, about 50 colleges in the countries that guarantees to meet full demonstrated need. So whatever you need to come here, that's your financial aid package. And with that, I will pass it on to the next presenter. Thanks very much. Thank you, We College. Up next, we have Southeast Technical College. All right, guys, thank you this evening. Uh, glad to have you guys online. My name is Scott Dorman. I'm an admissions rep at Southeast Technical College in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, let's see here. 
trying to advance my screen for you. So at Southeast Tech, what are we focused on? Well, we're the one two-year school that's probably on here in this group tonight. And we're focused on that hands-on education and career-focused education. You can see the bullet points listed here on the side uh, that do break down all of our different degree areas in format. Uh, but you'll also see that we offer 70 plus different pathways to professional success. Fast facts about our campus is Southeast Tech is just under 2,500 students in size. Our campus is 136 acres and we're located on the northwest corner of Sioux Falls. So just not far, about two miles south of I-90, right along Interstate 29. Our school does have five instructional buildings, uh, which is smaller than most of my colleagues here on campus or on, online here, excuse me. Uh, but all of those are skills relevant facilities with the equipment you need to move forward in your career. Uh, our campus does house some on campus dining, our newest building on campus called the Hub, located on the southwest corner of campus, actually houses Pavos Pizza and Grill uh, for our students. The bookstore for Southeast Tech is located in the Mickelson Center. The Mickelson Center is the first building that was built on our existing campus in 89-90 school year. And uh, since then, we have grown quite, uh, quite large in that respect. Southeast Tech does have a daycare on campus for anyone that may be a parent, uh, have children, maybe want to return to school or uh, have a child coming from high school, why we are there to help out and give you the assistance you may need to get your education. The IT support at Southeast Tech, uh, we do have a IT help desk available on campus. We're a laptop required campus. Um, campus-wide support in those in those areas. Now the interesting part about Southeast Technical College is we do not require that our students live on campus when you come to school. We do have some available on-campus housing and on my screen you'll actually see the format and the layout of our apartments. Um, we have two apartment buildings on campus. There's Andera Hall and there is a Hummel Hall. And you will see that it is apartment living, it's four bedrooms, two bathrooms. There's a common living area, a common dining area and kitchen. Now, all of this stuff is available, it's right on campus and all the utilities are included all the way down to your laundry. No more having to have rolls of quarters laying around. These, these apartments do come partially furnished uh, all the way down to a dishwasher in the kitchen. And I don't know if I've ever heard of a college kid needing a dishwasher, but uh, it does work out pretty well. You can see the estimated cost listed uh, on the slide as well. And that is in addition to the cost of education. All right, so once again, there was a previous slide talked about skills relevant facilities. We do use the latest equipment available in the industry today. We want to have you up to speed with what's gonna be in the workforce when you come out of Southeast Tech, or we wanna have you at least a half a step ahead. Now, along with that, the reason we're able to have this equipment and able to have these skills relevant facilities is because of our passionate faculty. Um, of course, you can see the, the listing, they're dedicated industry trained, supportive and mentors, but to teach at Southeast Tech, you have had to spend five years in the professional setting in the given field that you are actually teaching. So you are also learning from people who have been there and done that. When you talk about getting into cardiac ultrasound or you're even getting into welding or auto tech or you're getting into um, internet security, why it's nice knowing that your faculty have actually been down the professional ropes. So what's the secret to our success? Well, the hands-on teaching approach. Um, we like to say that you didn't learn to drive a car by reading a book. So uh, that's the, the steps that we take is we will sit and we'll have usually an hour of lecture may turn into about two to three hours of lab time where you'll actually perform the things that were discussed in your lecture. Um, your instructors, like I said, they have professional experience, but we do have those small class sizes as well. Uh, it talks about a smart investment and we'll move on to the next slide with that. So in this slide, you'll actually see the average cost in South Dakota Okay. at Southeast Tech is in the light blue. So two years comes in about around $18,000 ballpark uh, in that area. And then the dark blue, you'll see the average cost of four-year public or private university in the state of South Dakota. Um, 
So it's a smart investment when you start looking at the returns on your professional uh, outcomes. And the financing options that come with Southeast Tech, come to your financial aid office or our financial aid office, sit down with Micah Hansen and his staff and sit and go through what you're available for. Are you, are you eligible for grants? Uh, you'll be eligible for loans. Are you eligible for work study? Uh, and then of course, on our website under the cost and aid tab, you'll actually find a listing for scholarships. And uh, the four tech schools of South Dakota actually have a pretty unique scholarship called the Build Dakota Scholarship in which it is a full ride opportunity in, an, in a hands-on career industry. The catch is you have to work in South Dakota for three years post-graduation and you owe zero dollars uh, if you fulfill your obligation. So, with that being said, the next steps with our admissions process, um, please feel free to follow up with me if you like, uh, or any one of my colleagues in the admissions office. Um, you can schedule a, an individual video conference call. You can actually come to campus. You can schedule a phone call uh, or attend a campus visit day. Our last campus visit day is actually next Friday, a week from tomorrow. And, uh, but we are taking appointments and actually touring our facilities every day of the week. So if you wanna make a trip over to Sioux Falls and, and tour our campus, we love to show it off. Uh, to apply for admission, we have an online application available on our webpage. Uh, we have never charged in my 22 years of working at Southeast Tech, we have never charged for our application. So it is free to fill out the application and send your transcripts and know if your future could be at Southeast. To apply for scholarships, there is there is a, uh, a link on our cost and aid tab, like I said, and it's one application will actually fulfill all the, the scholarships. And like I said, if there's any questions, please reach out to us. Let us know what we can do to help you. Um, Southwest Minnesota and Northwest Iowa actually make up about 38% of our campus population. So uh, we love to have students come from Minnesota. Thank you so much, Southeast Technical College. Up next, we have the University of Northwestern. And Terry, you are on mute. Thank you. I am just gonna get my... Hang on one second, there we go. Well, I'm coming to you from the University of Northwestern in St. Paul, and we like to say we don't want to just get a degree. We want you to find your mission. We are a Christian institution. We are a non-denominational university and evangelical Christian school. We provide a rigorous academic program with professional degrees within a passionately Christ-centered environment. So you can see here on our mission statement that we exist to provide Christ-centered higher education uh, education equipping students to grow both intellectually and also spiritually to serve them in their professions and to give God honoring leadership um, in the home church community and world. Here's what we're going to look at tonight. I know that you've heard a lot of information already tonight so I just want to say that our website is unwsp.edu so if you miss anything or you can't take in any more information visit our website and you can learn all about the University of Northwest. UNW, it, UNW is grounded in the word of God and we're motivated to glorify God in our learning. So we consistently pursue academic excellence. So whether you're looking for a degree in nursing or business or education, we have um, fantastic outcomes. 100% of our nursing students are employed within six months. Our education majors are equipped for a variety of diverse teaching opportunities because they log more than 500 hours in the classroom before they graduate. Um, we have a 98% acceptance rate for students who apply to medical school. You can see here our class sizes are right around 20 to 25. We have wonderful internship opportunities so our students can learn um, real world experience. And Minnesota, fun fact, is the second most Fortune, has second um, most Fortune 500 companies per capita. So we're the home to General Mills and 3M and Best Buy and United Health Group. And so those are great opportunities to meet other alumni who are working in those fields and also to develop a great um, portfolio of internships and experiences. 
And then we also have study abroad options. Uh, my son went to Argentina uh, during his um, schooling at Northwestern and he enjoyed his semester abroad. And that's just a wonderful way to explore the world. Um, students can find spiritual development opportunities in lots of different ways through the residence halls, in the classroom, and in our community life. We have mission trips opportunities, campus outreach, um, mentorships, which is wonderful to just get relationship intergenerationally. I'm a mentor to a current um, senior who is going to be graduating in the spring. Um, so, and we also have daily chapel, worship, and prayer. When you look at our athletics, we are a D3 school. We have about 18 to 20 uh, varsity sports teams. Lots of intramural opportunities if you don't want to play at the collegiate level, but you still want to play sports. We have a lot of intramural opportunities. So if you're interested in playing sports at um, the University of Northwestern, I would encourage you to go on to the athletic website, which is UNW Eagles, because we're the Eagles, and fill out a recruit form. We also have lots of um, opportunities in the fine arts. Students have lots of opportunities to major in the fine arts or just participate in choirs or vocal or instrumental ensembles. Our theater, our theater department creates wonderful productions, providing numerous opportunities for students to be involved both on stage and behind the scene. And a fun fact um, about Northwestern is that Pixar helped us design um, gave us some sug design suggestions for our digital media arts program. Our location is in the Roseville Arden Hills area. We're located on 107 acres of beautiful lakeshore. So there's lots of walking paths and lakes, kayaking and paddleboarding, all those kinds of things. But we're also only 10 minutes from downtown, both downtowns, downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis. So along with all the Fortune 500 companies, the Twin Cities is also has a plethora of museums or sporting events or concerts or churches or restaurant opportunities. So as a college student, you have lots of um, things you can explore not very far from our location. Um, the thing that I like about the dorms is there's no community bathroom. They're um, dorm style or apartments. We have um, bathrooms and showers in each room, a kitchenette in each room, including a stove, oven, and refrigerator. And then we have lots of clubs and activities. So there's a club for you, whether you're looking um, to unite students and grow cultural awareness, or you're just looking for maybe a knitting club or a broom ball club. There's a lot of variety um, that are student-led clubs on the campus of Northwestern. Like you've heard from many of the other colleges, uh, we would encourage you to apply early. We do have a rolling admissions, which means you'll hear within a you know, week or so about your application. It's not a very complex application. We are test optional and we give you a quick response and you will work with a personal admissions counselor who will walk you through all of the steps that you'll need to know. Um, UNW does offer financial aid to every student and not only do we offer scholarships, grants, and loans, but we offer tools and resources to help all our students thrive in college and beyond. So once you're an Eagle, you're always an Eagle. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the chat box for me, or you can reach out to me, or you can just visit our website. Thanks so much. Thank you, University of Northwestern. With that said, that concludes our presentation portion of our college fair today, but we will move on to a Q&A. So I would encourage all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn on your camera, um, Brady Bunch style. And I'm gonna pose a question and our panelists will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. So we'll start with DePaul University first. I'm gonna go ahead and share the question. Our first question, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? At DePaul University, one of my favorite things, and part of this is because I miss the snow. Um, we don't get half as much snow down in Indiana as we usually would in Minnesota, but on the very first snowfall of campus, there's a big boulder in the middle of campus. And so everybody drops everything that they're doing and they run to the boulder and back to where they are. And when I say they drop everything, it could be in clothing, it could be not. I'll let I'll leave that up to uh, your imagination. So I think it's kind of funny. Well, 
My favorite Iowa State tradition is called camp annealing. So what happens is during our homecoming week after our football game on Saturday night, students actually flock to our camp annual, which some students say it's a bell tower. At the stroke of midnight, you are supposed to kiss another Iowa Stater to become a true Iowa Stater. And that's one of many traditions at Iowa State that's very unique and a lot of students participate in. Um, at MSUM, I'll also pick a homecoming one. Uh, we do something called Battleship H2O. How it works is you get in teams of four in a canoe, we throw the canoe in the pool, and then you try to drown out the other canoes in the pool before they drown you out. No idea why it's a thing here, but we love it. I did it. Didn't do great, but it was very fun. Uh, so I'll pick that one. At uh, Reed, one of my favorite traditions um, is the Doyle Owl, um, which is for, I think, something like 60 or 70 years. Reedies, which is what we call ourselves, Reed students have been stealing from each other a 300 pound concrete lawn ornament owl um, that was uh, apparently used to belong to a, a house nearby campus. And um, that owl has been through a lot. It doesn't look very much like an owl anymore. It's more like a big egg uh, piece of concrete, but uh, students will steal it, hide it. Other students will find out where it is. I've seen it dragged behind a pickup truck on uh, an icy day. Um, so it's always it's always a fun time. And at least once a year, there's a big owl fight where someone drops it on a location on campus, summons the rest of the student body, and they all uh, jockey for position to be the one to take home the Doyle Owl. Well, I get to be the stick in the mud of the group here. Uh, being a tech college, we don't have all of these traditions because we don't have this campus community kind of a setup like that. Um, but it is very unique in, in the way that we do things, trying to keep the students involved. And I would say, Scott, do you have a favorite event on campus? Well, like I said, I mean, when we only house 200 students on campus, it's not like we have athletic teams or anything uh, because we are, not a we are not a community college. And so our students are really, we have some of those that get involved in our student government and student organizations and, and those kind of things. But realism is most of our campus, when they're done with class, they go to work and they're, they're making money and working in our community. Thanks for sharing. I would say there's a couple things that I really love. One of the longer traditions is just the, the old school homecoming when um, everybody comes back to campus and you just get to see all of the generations. So I love being able to see the professors that were there when I was a student and then um, seeing you know, people from all the different generations. And then a newer one, because engineering is newer to us, they'll, they'll gather down at the lake and the engineering students have to develop um, something that can walk on water. And so to watch these engineering students and you know, the lake just never really gets super warm in Minnesota. And so to watch them try to use their things that they They've developed to walk on water is quite interesting. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all for sharing. Um, with that said, that concludes our college fair for tonight. But I do have a few closing items before you go. The first is um, a survey will appear, you know, as you exit our Zoom session today. It's approximately four questions, but please respond to that survey. Your feedback will be very useful for us as we aim to improve future college fairs. Also, I wanna share one more time that a recording will be available in about a week or so. So feel free to visit tribescan.com slash Minnesota in case you missed anything or you just wanna rewatch um, to, to gather all the information that was shared here today. With that said, I wanna thank our amazing panelists for all of your information. It was very informative. And again, thank you all to our attendees. I hope everyone has a great night. Thank you so much. <laughs>